When someone call, close to you tells you, you can't do something, that's a bad idea, don't try it, all of those things hit you like a bolt of lightning. Mike, the Golden State Picker. I am flying the GOAT. Joe Montana, number 16 of the San Francisco 49ers. I consider him the GOAT. The greatest of all time. Four Super Bowls. Yes, Tom Brady has six. Why do I consider Joe the greatest? Because he grew up in the era of football where there was some punishment laid out. So I think that has a little bit to do with it. But Joe uh, is was as a child... Uh, young guy, teenager, he was my he was my guy. Joe was my guy. So this is a Super Bowl video. Today is Saturday. Tomorrow is the Super Bowl. And for you who are new, I'm Mike. I am the Golden State Picker. I am out of San Jose, California, Silicon Valley. We usually talk about what we found, what we sold. Today we're going to talk about something that Brock Purdy, the new quarterback for the 49ers, said. And it struck me, and I'm going to pass that along to you. We're going to talk reselling. We're going to talk about some stuff that makes you maybe a little bit better or gets you starting. If you're new, starting reselling, starting a bit, whatever. Uh, I've been around 61 years, and I like to impart some of my 61 years of wisdom. And uh, reselling is fun. I love to go out and find stuff, tell you what I found, show you what I sold. But occasionally, i got to do these type of videos. And the reason why is I want you to be inspired. I want you to understand that there is more to just all of that. I can run those videos all day long, and you just see numbers over and over. And, uh, you know, it's, I just got to let you know a little bit of flavor, a little bit of feel, that kind of stuff. So, anyhow, first off. Tell me who you're voting who you're voting for. Tell me who you're rooting for. Um, are you rooting for the 49ers or the Chiefs? Or is your team not in the game? Anyway, let me know down below in the comments. It doesn't matter. Uh, I um, I have great friends who are Cowboy fans. I was at Buffalo Wild Wings, and they were there when the 49ers beat the Detroit Lions. We'll talk about that in a second. But anyhow, that was an interesting, uh, interesting day. Uh, they know who I am. I know who they are. And it's all in good fun. That's the key. Let's have fun. Let's make it uh, enjoyable. One day you win, next day I win, whatever, that kind of thing. So uh, I think some people get way carried away. I know I love my 49ers, and I do get excited about them. But in the long run, it's still football, and life is a little bit more important than football, so to speak. <laughs> yes. All right. So anyhow, who is Brock Purdy? Really quick, just that, so some of you are going, who is this guy? Brock Purdy is 24 years old, went to Iowa State, four-year, he wasn't a four-year starter, he came in when he was a freshman and took the team, and he played for almost four years for Iowa State. He was drafted by the 49ers, number 262, or seventh round last pick in the draft. Mr. Irrelevant is what they call him. And he is was the third-string quarterback last year, both the first string and second string quarterback for our team got hurt and Brock came in, uh, I think week 13 against the Dolphins. And from then it's been a ride of incredible performance by a 24 year old uh, rookie, basically he's still kind of so young and he's now in the Super Bowl. And it's very interesting to watch this ride from Brock Purdy. Well, during the week they have uh, at Super Bowl, they have media events, and the players are made available to the media, and they ask Brock a lot of questions and everybody else. And Brock has been taking some heat, and I don't know why, but they are calling him a game manager. He's not like Patrick Mahomes, or Josh Allen, all of these other guys. And I'm thinking to myself, what are we talking about here? Throwing a football with 300-pound guys trying to knock your head off I don't care who you are, Brock Purdy, Josh Allen, or Mahomes, is difficult, period. You may have great players, but you've got to get the ball to them. So they're all game managers, in my opinion. Joe Montana was a game manager, and he even said so. He goes, hey, I wanted the ball out of my hands. I wanted to get it to Jerry Rice. I wanted to get it to Roger Craig. I wanted to get it to John Taylor. Let them have the football. Let them get hit. I won't get hit. They'll take off and run. 
Basically, we're all game managers. Our businesses, we manage our games. The top of the corporate ladders, all of those people are game managers. They're just managing something different. But that's the way that this media seems to play everything. They're looking for likes, dislikes, uh, getting some eyeballs on my videos, all that kind of stuff, right? And it's kind of driving me crazy. I've actually stopped listening to the Super Bowl hype because it's basically the same thing about Brock. And it's driving me crazy. Every time I turn around, somebody says Brock is great. Somebody says Brock is a game manager. He's not blah, blah, blah. But anyhow, Brock was interviewed and they kind of a, they hit him with this question. And Brock, this is how he's so wise for 24 years old. I will tell you that Brock is a Christian. So am I. Brock has a deep religious faith in Jesus Christ. And he tells you, he will read scripture. He will tell you a scripture number. And I'm wondering if that might have a little bit of mm -mm, something with some of these people, you know. But anyhow, Brock has a devout faith. And I love it. My wife has gravitated to Brock Purdy because she sees that this guy is, hey, he's like her. She feels like, hey, he's got the same kind of belief system, all that kind of stuff. All right, here we go. They asked him a question and he said this. He said, I aim to prove myself right not prove others wrong because all this stuff's going on, right? He says, I'm not going to prove them wrong. I'm going to prove that Brock Purdy's right because Brock Purdy has grown up with certain stigmas about himself. The great coach, Nick Sabian for Alabama said a few things about Brock, that he wasn't of the stature. He wasn't this, he wasn't that. That's Nick Sabian who has won all those NCAA championships for Alabama got Brock Purdy wrong. They all miss, okay? But Brock's had to live with that for all his life. Most of these athletes do. So Brock is saying, look, I'm going to prove myself right. Over here, go do what you got to do, okay? I'm going to worry about myself being right. And I think we need to take that in our business. And if we're trying to be resellers and trying to do certain things, uh, starting out, it's right here. I hear people say, Boy, my sales are down. What's going on with my sales? All that kind of stuff. Let's go. <coughs> Let's look right here. It means we've got to list more. We've got to do some more stuff, right? All that kind of stuff. Look here. Don't look there, okay? Uh, that, uh, that's just me saying. So you got to prove yourself right. So here's some stuff. When someone call, close to you tells you you can't do something, that's a bad idea. Don't try it. All of those things hit you like a bolt of lightning. Your best friends, your family. Uh, you're starting out, you go, hey, you know, I've, uh, I've watched all these uh, YouTube guys. Uh, you know, Kevin Commonwealth Picker, Picker, Nat, uh, I mean, Cat, the nurse uh, flipper. You know, all of them. And when you're watching all these people and they're going, hey, they're, they're doing pretty good with this reselling. And the Golden State Picker, he's doing pretty good. And you want to figure it out. You go, I think I can do some of this stuff. And you go, I'm going to give it a shot. And then you start to explain to some people because you're excited. And boom, arrow number one. And it hits you. And you're not expecting that. And you go, well, what do I do? Well, you got to have that arrow kind of bounce off you. You need that to deflect. You need to put your armor on, the armor of God, right? But anyhow, you need to put that armor on so that it bounces off of you. And you know that you're rooted in yourself and trying to prove yourself right and not what's going on over here. It's fun to tell people, hey, this is what I want to do, uh, but be prepared that there are going to be some who are going to take some shots at you, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? Don't let your emotions, your emotions of the rejection hits your feelings, right? And that's where we start to, you know, oh my gosh, you know, some of us can't handle that. You've got to be able to really have a thick skin sometimes with some of this stuff that happens to you uh, throughout uh, your journey as a business person, not just as a reseller, but as you grow your business and as you start to branch out uh, more and more, it can it can really be a tough, a tough. The most successful people in the existence of the world were told they're, and were told either through their circumstance or by someone else that they were not good enough. What what happens to me? What happens to somebody else? It's happened to Jeff Bezos. It's happened to Elon Musk. It's happened to Nick Sabian of Alabama. It's happened to many people. And uh, you have to be able to respond to that stuff uh, in yourself. You cannot 
let them dictate to you uh, those things. Can you imagine how many people probably have had great ideas that have allowed stuff like that to happen to them? Boom, right? Allow that to happen. You're not going to know. You're never going to know if you don't take those steps to block that kind of stuff out, right? We either believe that person or we believe ourselves. Here's something very important. We cannot be on the fence during those moments. There's no fence sitting. You're over here on your side to be right. You're not over here. You're not in the middle. You're over here. You have to do that, okay? You have to believe in yourself and trust yourself that you're going to be right. Think long term. Open your mind. Open your vision up. I don't like to use the word goals, right? Because once we hit a goal, that means you're stopping. I want a vision. I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to be uh, more than uh, what I am today, five years from now, 10 years from now, all of that, right? When you prove yourself right, you'll make an impact for others and more importantly, yourself. When you prove yourself right and you grow your business right and you do things right, there are other people who come along or who you affect in a positive way, who you take along with you, those kind of things. All those people, Elon Musk, all those famous people who built these big companies, those are just an example. They've all been, hey, I'm right. You might not like the way some of them do their business, okay? But they've taken a lot of people with them. The tree gets wider, right? It's up here, but it gets bigger down here. So more people, they create jobs, they create things. Uh, that's because they didn't listen to the naysayers over here. And that's what Brock Purdy's doing. He's not listening to the naysayers. He's saying, look, if I do what I do, I'll be okay. And then over here, you're going to have to shh. Okay, I'm going to do shh. That's what it is. I'm going to give you a quick story in a second. But here's a quote. Wolves don't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. I love this one. Wow, this is great. Yeah, Wolves don't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. Now, real quick. Uh, basically, <clears throat> when I was, um, when I got married, very young, we've been married 37 years my wife and I, and uh, at the reception, uh, we had, uh, you know, a lot of people there, and most of the people there were deputy sheriffs, because my family was uh, heavily in law enforcement, and uh, basically, uh, there was one gentleman who I've known all my life for a long time, and had a lot of respect for, and I still did, okay, I didn't change it, it, it made me shocked, but what he said, but it didn't caused me to just leave him by the wayside. And what that was, was he said something to a person there that he didn't think that this marriage would last. Not the first person to say that at a wedding reception, right? But I happened to hear it. And it sucked because, hey, I'm a young kid. I was a skinny, 135 pound, six foot tall, just, you know, uh, you know that kind of thing. And it kind of stunned me because, hey, my mother, love my mother, but she had been divorced four times. I mean, it was crazy growing up. I don't know how I got through it, okay? But God had a plan for me, and that was my wife, to meet my wife, and from there, everything changed, okay? But what I'm saying is, I didn't want to prove him wrong, because I'd always told myself when I was, going to get, when I was getting married, I said, I got to prove myself that I can make this work, that I can make a marriage work, and it's been 37 years. And I still have work to do because I'm not perfect. No way am I perfect. I can, I mean, you know, seriously. But I probably have, I hope to have another 20. That put me at 81. I can have another 30, right? That could put me at 67 years. 30 years, 20 years. Think of that. I still have to prove myself, right? I still have to do it. It's every day we have to do that. And we just got to keep doing it, trust in yourself, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to give you a little bit of an analogy because um, I was thinking about trust and basically what you have to do in that. And I always like to use like golf because I like to play golf. You know, our first instincts are usually correct. 
But then when someone comes along and shoots that arrow at you, it might change that instinct and you go, oh, oh I'm, now I'm, I'm thinking, right? It's the worst thing you can do. I, our, my buddies, we are so funny. Uh, you know, we will tell each other, quit being a thinker because you'll mess everything up. As soon as you start to overthink it, it's gone. And in golf, for example, you stand on a green and the green has slope and we have to read the putt. The hill and the valley, they tell you, okay, you know, there's the hill, so it might slope this way. So it goes to the right. Well, you get up on the top of the putt and you look at it and you go, wow, it looks like it goes to the left. You're done. You're right, right there, you're done. Your first instinct is probably correct. It's gonna go to the right. You get up there and then all of a sudden you divide it. You go, well, you know what, maybe it's between the two and the ball goes to the right, but misses by that much. And you say to yourself, man, my first instinct was correct. That's the same thing in, uh, in what we do here. When you are thinking about yourself, those first instincts can really make a difference. Don't muck them up. Don't let somebody else on this side muck up your mind, okay? You got it. You'll figure it out. You're going to make mistakes. Yes, you will. We all do. But you will figure out how to get through the mistakes, okay? Definitely will. Now, we need something else. We need some standards. We must operate with standards and not feelings. Standards are the principles we live by. We have to live by something. So we need some good principles, that kind of stuff around us. <clears throat> that gets back to the outside influences. If they're bad, they need to go away. You need to let them go. You need to not let them shoot arrows because occasionally they're going to land an arrow. Yeah, some are going to bounce off, but man, they might have that one that gets right up underneath you. So keep that in mind. Standards are unwavering, unchanging, and allow us to determine our own expectations. Gets back to what? Our own. We need to be right. Okay? We don't need to prove somebody wrong. Prove ourselves right. We're going to live with that. Let them make the judgments, right? So our feelings are far more volatile. We need to get away from those feelings and uh, be a little bit more uh, in ourself, centered more in ourself, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, uh, I was going to give you a quick uh, Brock Purdy thing too because my wife was, uh, it was interesting. My wife was, uh, I was watching the, um, uh, the, soup, oh, not the, soup, the Super Bowls tomorrow. <laughs> I was watching the NFC Championship game, surrounded by Cowboy fans. I love them. They love me. I love them. It's a lot of fun. And uh, the 49ers were down 24 to 7, and my wife sent me a text, and she said, she was asking how I was doing. I said, I ain't doing so good right now. She goes, I, I, this is what she said. I got to write, I didn't want to write it down, but I got it. I said a prayer for Brock Purdy when I saw them down. They went on to win, okay? They went on to win 34 to 31. And I, I've, that has been sticking in me forever. And uh, my wife, you know, is just a big Brock Purdy fan. And she had the faith. And at that time, I was losing the faith. I needed a little bit of something. And my, my wife uh, gave me that, okay? So keep in mind, don't waste energy on the feelings that bring you down and make you question your own capability, guys. Don't, don't do that. Uh, basically, uh, allow yourself to be right. Figure that out. Don't let those those thoughts hurt you. You know, it's interesting now. Uh, social media. All that kind of stuff, right? All we're seeing these days on the news is, is negativity. I, I can't stand it. I don't watch Fox. I don't watch CNN. I don't watch MSNBC. I try to figure out my news in other sources and other ways. It's very difficult to get away from all this stuff. Uh, it's very difficult to get away from Taylor Swift right now. Uh, I'm just telling you, you got to figure out how to tame social media. Brock said this too. Brock said he was staying away from social media during the Super Bowl week. He said he wanted to focus on himself, which is I want to need to I need to make sure I'm right, and I also need to make sure my teammates are taken care of, and I need to figure that out. So that's what we have to do. We have to figure out ways to get away from all this negativity. All we see these days are news channels that just spew negativity. We see so much negativity and people in the outside world being cruel, all that kind of stuff. At the workplace, all we do is hear people complain all day long. 
We hear a lot of this stuff, right? Bombarding. Social media uh, feeding our minds with negativity in some ways, okay? There are some good things about social media. I'm not going to knock that, but you got to find those. Because every so often, well, it's like, pew, there's one, that's an arrow, okay? Boom, there's another one. It's coming from me in all directions. So you got to be very careful. You got to stay focused. Uh, and that's what Brock's doing. He's trying to stay focused. So he wants to get that outside influence. We keep coming back to that, right? It's, we're we've got to be centered. We've got to be right and let them go over there and do their thing, right? So be very, very careful. Remember, you get what you look for, okay? And, and if you're not looking for the right things down that rabbit hole, you go. So keep that in mind, okay? What you uh, look for, you get. And that generally, it's generally pretty true. So instead, spend your time and positive energy proving yourself right, guys. That's it. I'm going to leave you with something that I wrote here that is um, uh, a synopsis of all this right here. Uh, and it's, it's basically what I have learned over some time. But here it is. It's really short. No one can take away your personal victory, wedding day, and they cannot hold it over your head. If you fail, it's not because they were right. It is because you made a mistake. If you succeed, it's not because you wanted to smash your greatness in their face. It's because you did what was necessary to achieve your vision. Don't prove them wrong. Prove yourself right. Wow. That is it in a nutshell. That's it. No secrets. No, you can't go out and buy uh, things. You can go out and buy a physical business. It has physical items inside that business. But you have to prove you're right by deciding how to manage and make that business work. No different than reselling, okay? Uh, it is all up to you and yourself and how you do it, not others. Others may give you some good ideas and some good tips, but there are many out there who shoot arrows constantly constantly at you don't let those arrows stick let them bounce off you prove yourself right and everything will work out i promise you if you do that it may take 5 10 15 years it may but imagine what that's like down the road okay i can tell you that five years ago i didn't know where i was going I really didn't have a great idea. I had some idea. Reselling came along. I said, okay, let's go do this. You have this in you. And now five years later, look where I am. I'm doing YouTube videos. I'm having a ball. I, I mean, I make the videos all, all the time. I, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm in this garage. It's crazy. But I love it. I love that people uh, send me comments. Talk to me. Let me know what you're thinking, what you're doing. Uh, I'm always trying to help you. Hopefully, you give me some advice, too. All right, guys, that's enough. There you go. Super Bowl. It's tomorrow. Oh, man, I'm like, oh, it's tough. It, the whole week's been kind of like crazy. I just want to play the game, right? So here we go. Hopefully, my Niners will do well. Uh, wish wish them the luck. Wish Brock Purdy luck. If you don't know, go look up Brock Purdy. If you're thinking, who is this Brock Purdy? Take a look. Type in and uh, read a little bit about him. Interesting. Don't know what's going to happen with him, but it could be something very big uh, in the future. We don't know. But I'm going to watch him and see what happens. All right? Thanks again for watching my videos. I love it. Hit the like, subscribe, bell notification, and I'm going to see you in my next video, which will show you some stuff we found and some stuff we sold.